This is the Data Privacy Detective, and today we're going to talk about HIPAA and our medical data and privacy. Now, this is going to be focused on the United States, and we have a great guest today, uh, John Cook. John is the president of Kingwood Data Privacy with 30 years of experience in healthcare and applied math mathematics, statistics. He's worked with businesses ranging from startups to Amazon and Google. And uh, the company's recognized as a leading provider of HIPAA, H-I-P-A-A, -A, expert determination that assists companies in de-identifying personal information and promoting medical data privacy while complying with the law. Well, John, thank you so much for joining us on the show. Thank you very much for having me. Well, uh, medical and health data, that, that covers a lot of stuff. And we do have a U.S. federal law called HIPAA. So let me start by who's covered by that, John? Well, the law is written to address uh, what they call covered entities, which was intended to be hospitals and insurance companies, basically. But uh, the law is a little broader than that. Uh, People who provide services to hospitals under a business associate agreement are also covered under HIPAA. And uh, there's very, various ways someone might get caught under HIPAA. Yeah, those latter group, we call them business associates under HIPAA lingo, right? Right. Okay, and then now HIPAA has a safe harbor, uh, at least people think it does. And, and what's that about? How does that work? So the safe harbor says that if your data doesn't have 18 different identifiers, you know, things like phone number or name or so forth, that if these things are removed, then uh, your data is considered de-identified. But there is a, a catch-all at the end that says, or anything else that you know of that might identify somebody. So it's not strictly just the 18 things. <laughs> And, that, you know, in this world of data privacy, we see these uh, acronyms, and one is PI, and the other is PII, and some people, boy, is that a typo? No, this is the difference between personal information and personally identifiable information. Uh, do I get it right? That's right. Yeah, and HIPAA is really protecting medical data by saying uh, depersonalize, uh, if you're a covered entity or a business associate information about an individual that you might share for other purposes. Uh, so well, let's, let, let, let's get into this. Uh, what, what are some of the risks? I mean, why, why do we have HIPAA? What, what, what are the risks uh, when we have our medical data shared with doctors or pharmacies or whoever it might be, insurance companies? Uh, so what? A lot of us say, I don't have anything to hide, do we? Well, a general problem with nothing to hide is it assumes that there are no mistakes and that if there are mistakes, that they're easily and quickly rectified. Uh, that's not necessarily the case. Uh, I heard a story of a, of a man who uh, underwent a lot of grief for sending uh, photos of his, his child to his pediatrician, uh, and the photos were flagged as child pornography. And even though the local authorities knew, oh, this, this is nothing, this is a man sending photos to his doctor, it still took a long time for him to, to resolve that. Right. Or we have uh, women who are seeking advice about pregnancy, uh, should they or should not carry a, a fetus to term. And those are very sensitive issues. That gets shared around. Uh, boy, that's an issue. Or, or takes anybody who's been diagnosed with some serious illness, uh, they probably don't want their employer immediately to know about it. I mean, there are all sorts of reasons that medical information about us as individuals should be, should be kept private. But on the other hand, would you agree with me, John, there, there are public health benefits to sharing health data. So we learn how to deal with diseases. Uh, so we learn how to prevent them, how to deal with epidemics. Uh, fair enough? Right. So uh, one of the biggest benefits there is that you can uh, follow people uh, in, in a different way than you could on a clinical trial. You could get actual behavioral information, you know, instead of saying this person uh, is prescribed this medicine well if you have pharmacy records you could see if they're actually taking the medicine or at least full, uh refilling the prescription or you know occasionally and inferring from that that they're taking it 
Good point. And in this this idea of de-identifying medical data, uh, how you know, talk to us about how easy that is. I mean, is it enough to say instead of calling the patient John Smith, we'll just call it patient uh, number one? Does that solve the problem? Well, about thirty years ago, everyone thought so. Uh, but then Latanya Sweeney, who's a, a pioneer in this area, uh, discovered that you could identify a lot of people once the obvious identifiers have been removed. And uh, she dramatically made her point by uh, showing the governor of Massachusetts his medical records, which she was able to discover by matching public data with supposedly de-identified uh, medical records. Yeah, for example, uh, let's say... Uh... Uh, yeah, and how does that occur? Let's talk about that a little bit. So let, let's say a, a healthcare provider says, well, it's patient number one, but that's all we're going to tell you. But on there is a, the area code of the phone number. Well, that kind of narrows it down. And then you, you, maybe there's an address. Well, that, now you know who it is. And th this is part of the problem, isn't it, in this world of uh, streaming data? Uh, and how do you deal with it? How does a business deal with this? Well, there are some conventions, like uh, typically uh, zip codes are truncated to the first three digits. Uh, th these conventions kind of follow the safe harbor provisions. Uh, but then there are statistical techniques to to see how identifiable what's left is. You know, is this correlated with that? How often do these things occur together? Uh, so there's... Uh, Sometimes you have to look at it on a case-by-case -case basis. So when Kingwood Data Privacy uh, works with a, uh, a healthcare organization, uh, you know, what are the steps? What are the, what are the questions you ask about a database? And, 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 and then how do, you, how do you help them both comply with HIPAA and be more data-centric, privacy-centric? Right. Well, one of the things that comes up uh, initially is the trade-offs what's most important uh, to the business that holds the data uh, because there's many ways to de-identify a data set like uh, you know column a and b are a problem together which one of these is more important to you you know they may come back and say oh we don't really need b let's just delete it or uh, they'll say well both of these are important so something somewhere else has to give if if possible let me ask you this. Can software just take care of the problem? Can software remove personally identifiable information from uh, text? Sort of. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it, it, it depends on context. So I have a number of clients, uh, even right now, who have uh, de-identified free text. And sometimes that works well, and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you have uh, an AI method that's been trained on clean English prose, and then it falls on its face when it's given choppy uh, medical transcriptions. Yeah. Well, where do you think health data privacy, at least in the United States, uh, is headed? And what I mean by that is, uh, I, will we have increasing uh, state laws augmenting federal laws? So will we have Identity orchestration, will that become something we all talk about? Or are we going to head towards passwordless techniques? I mean, what, what, what are you seeing in this uh, world that you work in? Yeah, a lot of states are uh, passing uh, their own laws. Uh, there's no comprehensive uh, federal law uh, ever since uh, HIPAA. For example, HIPAA was very narrow looking at electronic medical health records, which is all records now. But then uh, entities like 23andMe are not covered entities because they're not insurance companies. They're not hospitals. And so uh, the state See, But they have, our, uh, they have our DNA, basically, don't they? <laughs> Absolutely. And that's why some state laws have, have filled in the gaps. Like Texas has a law that says medical data is, is covered under the law, whether you're a HIPAA-covered entity or not. This is really important what you're saying, because a lot of us are so used to HIPAA. I mean, we can't even let it. Our, our spouse can't even see our medical records without us signing some document saying, yes, it's OK yeah, to share the information. But but it, it doesn't preempt states from having their own laws. And that's what you're uh, but that's what you're seeing. Th that's right. Now, often the state laws are written to defer to HIPAA. 
basically saying if if you're covered under HIPAA, then you're okay. But if not, here are the things you need to do that are new. Right. So the state laws are, are covering, uh, well, law firms, for example, anybody that's really handling medical data that's not covered by HIPAA. That, that, so it's, that's a lot of people that uh, weren't originally covered by HIPAA is what I'm hearing from you. That's right. Right. Well, what are your top tips, John, for organizations, uh, whether they're covered by uh, HIPAA expressly or by state laws or just want to be privacy centric when they're handling very sensitive data about us, our healthcare and our medical information. What are your top tips for organizations? Uh, one would be just to release that on a need to know basis. Don't give someone access to more information than they need to get their job done. And encrypt data, encrypt it at rest, uh, encrypt it in transport and use standard, well-tested encryption. Right. And uh, storage, certainly important as well. Don't store things you don't need. It, 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 the whole concept of data minimization, uh, uh, right? That's right. How about for individuals? We all share our health data. We see the doctor. We, uh, I still have one that gives me a clipboard, you know, and you sit down and 10 minutes you fill it out, even if you provide it electronically. But uh, we provide a lot of data, too. I'm, I'm, I'm about to have my COVID booster shot while I'm giving my pharmacy information. So we're spreading it all around. As individuals, what are your top tips for us if we want to safeguard our healthcare information? Well, I think the biggest privacy risk to individuals is not their healthcare data per se, because healthcare is, health code data is well regulated. The biggest risk is everything else and then that can be tied back to health data potentially so what top tips do you have for people uh to guard not only their medical and healthcare data but uh, re really all of our data we, we i'm sure by now we've all had friends who've had their identity or their money stolen uh, through a phishing exercise generally but what are the top tips from your uh, many years of experience for individuals I would say to assume that any data that you provide someone, uh, any data that you provide a company is likely to be breached at some point and just anticipate that. Uh, use long, unique passwords at every site so that if someone breaks into one site, they don't break into another one. Those are good top tips. Uh, John, uh, any concluding thoughts for our listeners as they think about uh, not just their medical and healthcare data, but their data generally, how to protect it? I would say be aware that uh, far more is being collected about you uh, than you may realize, and don't volunteer information that you don't have to, and uh, be, be careful about uh, encrypting your data, not not agreeing by default to everyone who asks something of you. Yeah, maybe one last question for you on that. that you're on your browser, and the browser offers an option that says, do not track, and you click. Does that take care of everything? Uh, no. <laughs> <You can laughs> Simple answer. That, yeah. <laughs> Well, John, thank you for uh, really this interesting tour of, uh, uh, of HIPAA and medical information and uh, safeguarding privacy. And thanks for helping organizations understand how to de-identify uh, people uh, so that public health can make its own advances. As always, I'll close by reminding us all, protecting your personal data privacy begins with you.